Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, at least now we know how soon the reunification of Taiwan with China, main China, will occur, and that would be within the next five years. This is what is guaranteed by the new elected uh, uh, China, Chinese president, Xi Jinping, or leader, however you want to call this gentleman. This art, how do I know that? He says it. <laughs> so, um, this article comes from uh, this, uh, uh, let's see how you call, call this. Uh, is by Al Mayadeen. It's at a uh, uh, Middle Eastern uh, news outlet. outlet. It's, um, so, let's see what's going on here. So as you know, Xi Jinping was uh, elected. They had uh, for another five years. So he's been in power 10 years <clears throat> now for an unprecedented uh, five more years, unprecedented, uh, however you want to call it. But his uh, predecessor was only 10 years in power. Then he said, I'm retiring. Now he is going to stay longer than 10 years. So this, uh, this is the title. Chinese President Xi Jinping pledges to achieve reunification with Taiwan. So once he's in power, he pledges to uh, achieve reunification. He's got five more years. So within this five more years time period, he's going to achieve that reunification. Um, otherwise he would say, well, you know what? I'll be here forever and we will get it. We will get it sometime. No, he pledges that. So Chinese President Xi Jinping vows to achieve reunification with Taiwan and warns against foreign interference after a Pentagon official confirmed U.S. Special Operations Forces have been discreetly training Taiwanese troops for months. Well, I think everybody knew that. China's President Xi, President Xi Jinping pledged Saturday that a complete peaceful reunification with Taiwan will be an will be and can be realized. Uh, and I'm quoting, realizing national reunification by peaceful means best serves the interest of the nation as a whole, including our brethren in Taiwan, brethren in Taiwan, mentioned she in a speech making the 110th anniversary of the 1911 revolution that ended millennia of imperial rule and led to the founding of the Republic of China. She warned that, and I'm quoting, Taiwan independence is the biggest obstacle to the reunification of the motherland and the serious hidden danger. All right, what's the danger? He also warned against foreign interference in Taiwan after a Pentagon official confirmed U.S. Special Operations Forces have been discreetly training Taiwanese troops for months. What does that tell you? <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, Taiwan's Defense Minister said that military tensions with China were at their highest in 40 years after around 150 Chinese warplanes, um, where that, a record number, made incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone a few days ago. In addition, Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen stated on Thursday that Taiwan, I'm quoting, Taiwan does not seek military confrontation, end quote, but and I'm quoting again, will also do whatever it takes to defend his freedom. So I don't know exactly what these guys are talking about, but uh, uh, it seems like they, uh, they use two different languages. Um, the main China says, well, we, we're, we're together. It's just a temporary thing. You are uh, something over there, autonomous for a little while, but then you're going to come back. This is your destiny. The other guys are saying, no, we are independent right here. We have other uh, foreign uh, military on our territory training us, giving us uh, military weapons. <clears throat> I wonder for what? To defend from what? From Hungary or something? Or from, uh, I don't know, uh, Zimbabwe? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> the, main, the main threat for them is their brother, uh, <clears throat> what? A few uh, miles away from them. 80 miles the main uh, uh, island and then uh, there are some islands that I think they have about 10 kilometers from the main uh, China uh, territory so 
they speak two different languages. The guy says, oh, we're going to be together. The other guys are not. <laughs> I don't think so. And we're going to defend that, uh, you know, forced marriage on us. So uh, imagine that in that context. Well, we're married, actually. We just have to just put the signatures and go and uh, share the bedroom. That's all what China uh, uh, has to do in their vision. The other ones is like, I didn't, I didn't agree to marry you whatsoever. So what are you talking about? I'm going to pick whomever I want. And in the meantime, I have so many relationships with other men so, or women. So I don't really care. So that's how the relationship is seen from two different angles. Uh, the good thing for, for instance, certain countries uh, is that, and the, the, that's also the bad thing, is that Xi Jinping is still the president of China. Obviously, I'm talking about Russia and uh, other uh, countries where or with whom China has good, uh, you know, collaboration and uh, re good relationship. Foreign, uh, foreign policy works just fine, for instance, with Russia. Now, I don't know if uh, uh, Xi Jinping leaves office, who's going to be the next guy? Good for Americans or good for the Russians? There's no uh, middle ground here. And the same, if it's good for Russians, then uh, Xi Jinping is still there. Uh, I think uh, Xi Jinping was um, uh, moderate in his uh, approach. Um, and I'm talking about foreign policy. He could have been more aggressive in many, many uh, instances. And he continues his policy of creating a closer, closer and closer relationship with Russia. They said, uh, if you remember their statements, was that their relationship is not an alliance, is better, is more than an alliance between the two countries. Now, what's that better? I don't know, brotherhood, uh, marriage, what is it? Nevertheless, they have joined military operations and trainings in uh, uh, East Asia. And I think they had in the Barian Strait, they had in the uh, China Sea. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the Russian and the Chinese me uh, Navy. Um, not only, but they have also the, the joint, uh, as I said, trainings and operations of, over there. Concerning the United States, no, because they do the same thing over there. And remember, the uh, United States is about, I don't know, 8,000 miles away from uh, <laughs> East Asia. But nevertheless, they are very threatened by these guys. It's all about interest, obviously, and spheres of interest. And when Hitler uh, talked about that in the 20s and 30s, uh, about spheres of influence, uh, everybody said, no, that's very, uh, very bad, bad thing. No, what, what do you mean spheres of influence? Well, these guys did it after 1945, these guys being United States and uh, its weasels, including uh, Soviet Union and its weasels. So they divided it in two spheres of influence, exactly what it would have been uh, if, let's say, Germany succeeded in its goal of whatever the goal that was over there. Eventually, probably, I don't know, don't go further than that but anyway we still got two spheres of influence here which tells me that it was just blah 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 it's just a different it's me having a sphere of influence over there uh, it's not you having it and I replace you as being the bully boy of the planet instead of being you I'm stronger I punch you in the face I tell you how things are ran here otherwise would have been the other ones and believe me uh, as you know it's not something oh my god uh, empires and uh, uh, powerful countries, uh, powerful nations go and come and go and go and come and all that. I mean, think of the United States, think, thinks of itself as a whatever, Pax uh, Americana or something. It's been in power for 30 years. That's all. 30 years, not even 30 years. After the collapse of the Soviet Union or disintegration, they ran this planet for 30 years. Now they're challenged. Compare that with, let's say, more than 1,000 years of the Roman Empire. Not only existence, but dominance. If you take that, at least the dominance of the Roman Empire of 500 years. Let's take 300 BCE until, let's say, 300 CE, if you want, it's 600 years. Take it 200 years, and these guys are flexing their muscles for 30 years. That's a fluke in the history of this planet. So uh, it's just BS. And uh, I'm just, I just gave you this example, but it's true that it's true that certain things uh, get accelerated nowadays but on the other hand you have uh, uh, bigger means and faster means to uh, smack anyone you like over their mouth and implement your dominance now versus then remember how would for, in for instance Rome influence uh, China 
couldn't come across the world and uh, beat China up or vice versa. All right, but here it's very possible, it's more likely or possible that the United States could go and if they want, let's say, bomb China. It could happen right now if they give an order in one day, that could occur. So it's just everything is more accelerated. I'm not talking about who's winning, what's winning, what's going on. It's just the capability is there right now. And the destruction of this planet, obviously. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.